Hey everybody, welcome to part 8. I apologize for how long it's taken me to get this, uh, this episode up on the air, but I've had a problem with my camera, and I've actually had to replace it, so um, I'm using a, a different camera, and I'm also introducing a multi-shot multi here, so uh, we're going to try to step this up a little bit. So let's talk about um, episode 7, in which we, uh, we accomplished a couple of things, and then we'll go into what we're going to do today. So in episode 7, we focus primarily on the RF section of the radio. If you recall, the signal travels from the antenna to the RF section. Um, and what we tested there is, first of all, is the local oscillator working. We also checked that with a transistor radio. And we put a radio off station to see if we were getting any kind of squealing when we turned the tuning knob on the radio. We then checked the B+, the screen voltage and the negative voltage of the oscillator to see if it was good. We then said, okay, also check the tube. The oscillator tube could be bad. Keep in mind that some radios have separate os oscillator tubes and some have oscillator tubes that are built into another tube. We then checked the oscillator coils. We inspected them and tested them. We basically ohmed them out to see if the coils were good. And then we also checked the tuning cap. In this radio, the tuning cap is right here. And what we did was we made sure that the tuning cap was clean, that the, the fins weren't touching each other, and that the, uh, the tuning cap itself was isolated from the chassis. So let's assume that you've checked your RF section and it's good. What's next? Well, next you want to check your IF section. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. So let's get to it. So let's take a step back on where we are so far. So we've done our power supply. And we know that we have B plus and that the filaments are all lighting. We know that. We also checked the audio section of the radio and we know that it's capable of producing audio. And we've checked the oscillator section and found that it's working. And made and repairs, of course, that we found. So what happens if the radio is still not working? There's two places to check. The first one is the IF section and the detector. I'm going to put the schematic up on the screen and you'll be able to see exactly where I'm talking about on this radio. So let me put that now. It'll be right up in this corner somewhere. Okay, there it is. We left these for last because most often they cause very little problems. They're relatively simple. However, they can still be part of a radio that's not playing. So first let's start with the IF amplifier. First thing we're going to do again is check the tubes. Make sure they have B plus screen grid and screen grid voltages. Then we're going to check the control grid voltage and we'll expect to see a negative voltage on those grids. If any of these voltages are not correct, we'll examine that part of the circuit and find out why. We'll also check the continuity of the IF transformers, both primary and secondary, and they're on the schematic as well. And then we'll then feed a 455 kilocycle signal, or whatever frequency the manufacturer has chosen for your radio, it's always listed on the schematic, in the antenna and we should hear it from the speaker. That only leaves us with the detector circuit. The detector circuit is a simple circuit which uses a diode to remove the 455 kilocycle IF frequency from the audio. Basic, so remember what we're saying here, we're converting a frequency to audio. The diode is usually the first part of the first audio tube, the multi-section tube generally, but in some older sets it could be separate. It does two things. It removes the IF frequency, and second, it supplies the AVC, which is the automatic volume. This voltage to, to control the gain of the RF section of the receiver. It's a negative voltage that varies from the signal strength. We'll check the resistors and capacitors in this circuit to verify that they're in good condition. So let's take this radio and let's inject 455 kilocycles into the antenna and see if we get any kind of signal coming out of the speaker. So let's do that for you now. We'll show you how we do that. It's a pretty simple procedure. So let's get to that and I'll set it up and be right back. Okay, so here's our radio and what you're going to see over here is our signal generator. Let's take a look at that and we'll zoom in a little bit on that and you'll see that it's um, set to 455 kilocycles right there. Um, and we have that thing going, it's wide open, so there's no, we have the volume all the way up and we have it on high because we want to get a strong signal coming into the radio. And then if we flip back to the radio, 
you'll see right here this red lead is going into the antenna and this black one is just connected to the chassis. So theoretically we have a strong signal coming into the radio. Let's turn the radio on. We're going to let it warm up. And we should hear that annoying little buzz coming any second now. Let's put the volume up a little bit. Here it comes. Now if I tune the radio down to 455, near 455, it's going to be stronger. There it is. Let's turn the volume down. Right there is where it's strongest. It's very simple. And this is also the same procedure that you use to align the radio, which we're going to do in episode 9. So we've now proven that we're getting RF through the radio, and that it's going through the IF and being stripped out, and it's coming out as audio. It's that simple. Now, the other thing that we want to do um, in, this, in this section is we also want to do a visual underneath the radio. So let me set that up, and uh, we'll come back and look at that. All right, let's familiarize ourselves with what's under this radio. So first of all, right here, that's our first detector in our oscillator tube. That's the 6SA7. Right next to it, let's switch to this view. Right next to it here is our first IF transformer. There's four leads coming out of this thing, right? There's two coils, so you want to ohm those out. And make sure you've got continuity through the can. We then go over to the IF tube, which is the 6SK7, right here. That then brings us to our second IF transformer, which is right here. And again, we want to ohm out those wires that come out of there and make sure that they, uh, they're working, that there's, the coil is actually intact. And then lastly, we have our second detector, which is our, also our AVC and our audio frequency tube, which is our 6SQ7, which is right here. So the path you'll see goes from here, 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 and here. This is our rectifier tube, so that's providing power, for, obviously, for the whole thing. And this is our audio output tube right here, which uh, is uh, taking that IF frequency, that RF frequency, and stripping it out and producing audio. So when you look under here, you want to check the resistors, right? There are grid resistors here that you have to check, and you want to make sure they're all within tolerance and value and replace them if they're not. A typical radio has either a 10 or 20 percent uh, tolerance for resistors. Okay, these are not high precision devices. So, um, you know, if you check your resistor and it's out more than that, replace it. If you think it, they, you know, that it's um, close to being, you know, out of tolerance, replace it. Right? It's a simple enough process to do. So that's how you check the IF uh, section of this thing. Um, I mean, and then, you know, that really will help you to understand how the flow of the radio goes and where it's broken. So I think um, in, this, in this episode, we're going to end it. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to check screen voltages and, and that kind of thing, because you already know how to do that. Um, but it's important that you draw a map out of your radio. I think we covered that in one of the earlier sections. And you know exactly which pins of which tube where your voltages should be present and what they should be. Okay? So in part 9, we're going to go through the working set that we have here. And we're going to clean up any anomalies with the way the set operates and improve the sound quality and sensitivity. So that's coming up in uh, episode 9. Episode 9, we're also going to do a fast alignment of the radio and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And we'll show you how to do that. So that's it for this episode. Uh, I hope everyone is well. And if any of you are veterans, I, I, first of all, thank you for your service and hope you have a wonderful Veterans Day with you and your families. Everybody take care. This is Ron.